It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the New Orleans Saints and the Cleveland Browns. And it's coming up next on Madden Football. On a crystal clear late fall afternoon, EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to Cleveland, Ohio at Cleveland Brown Stadium. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And before kickoff, Charles, quickly your keys to the game. Well, partner, I could give you the standard ones, turnovers, special teams play. But here's one that doesn't get talked about much anymore, and that's time of possession. Whoever controls the football, gives their defense a break, and takes care of business, that's the team that's going to win this ball game. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Saints heading out for the first time, and there's Derek Carr at quarterback in his 11th NFL season now and second in black and gold. And Carr continues to produce good numbers on paper. He completed over 68% of his passes last season while also throwing 25 touchdowns to just eight interceptions. But as impressive as those numbers are, the numbers he's seeking, big numbers in the playoffs. And we expect him and his team to be back in the playoff mix when January rolls around. Now a play fake, Carr. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Zadarius Smith, he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. Well, if they have any thoughts of coming in here and getting this road victory, that's not the way to start it out on the first play of the game. Yeah, one thing you always say when you go on the road, take the crowd out of the game. They actually brought the crowd into it by permitting that sack right out of the gate. So an early wake-up call there leads to a quick second and long. Car. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that in-line point-of-attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. 12 yards there. Good for a Saints first down. That's a play that may get lost in the grand scheme of things. But one thing's for sure. You certainly don't want to go three and out to start the game. So that's a nice job of finding the right play call and coming up with a first down. To throw, it's Carr. They'll set up the screen now to Kamara. Ooh, the juke. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. And as you're game planning as a staff, you go through all the different ways you can neutralize the other guys' pass rushers. Extra linemen, leave a tight end in, bring the running backs back in to block. Or you can do this, a little simple screen pass, and it works to perfection. Again, it's Carr. Back to Kamara for another catch. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. But yet another completion here on this opening drive, and he's now perfect four of four to start. Pretty solid execution here. And how about how everyone's handled their nerves? Because you know what it's like to start a ball game. You're so amped up and ready to go, but sometimes the execution isn't there. They've been flawless so far. Well drilled, well prepared, and excited to start this game. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Perry. Quick slant there, gets him the first down, six yards on the play. We got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice, sustained series to begin the game, and it will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? 
I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. Still going. They can't stop him. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. A big play there on the catch and run, and it'll result in a fresh set of downs. For as much as we extol his route running and him as a pass catcher, he might be better with the ball in his hands. He did not want to go down there until he found the end zone. And while he didn't quite get there, he and his guys are set up near the goal line now, first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And he's got him, it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Saints get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Quite the drive there to get things started. They took up the bulk of the first quarter, and they end up in the end zone. And I love your last point. Ended up in the end zone. Because a lot of teams like those long drives, especially to keep their offense off the field, right? Keep the ball away from them but they finished it with a touchdown. That's the exclamation point. Now flip it over defensively. They've got to slow that down somehow, right? Maybe they need to be a little more aggressive, maybe a few more pressures towards the quarterback. Groupie able to add the PAT, and it's now a 7-0 game. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. So here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski, the former national champion at Clemson, bringing him onto the field. And that's the signal caller, Deshaun Watson. And after two consecutive seasons where he played just 12 games combined, they're hoping that this is a year where Watson finally shows that he was worthy of that massive contract they received back in 2022. Not that long ago, we are talking about him as one of the top quarterbacks in the league. And if he gets back on track, this team can make some serious noise as the year unfolds. They will start this drive with Ford. And he's going to be down at the 35, gain of seven. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. From the 35, here's second and three. Again, they turn to Ford. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. This is Ford. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. Give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They'll try the air now with Watson. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And Njoku is coming off an impressive season where he set new career highs in catches, yards, and touchdowns. He's a dynamic weapon for this offense. The handoff to Ford up the middle. 
And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed, and he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to over the middle, and there's a diving catch. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. I know a retirement ceremony is a rocking chair is often one of the major gifts, but don't give this guy one just yet. He may be plus 30, but my goodness, how about that effort? Yeah, he's not that old. Hey, I'm on the wrong side of 32. You, you, you okay? You feeling all right? <laughs> I'll be all right. Okay, good. I just need some chocolate and a box of tissues. <laughs> They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. And this carry terminated at the eight-yard line. Good stick skill showing the power, but just not much room to operate. 41 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Second down from the eight. They can get a first down by reaching the five. Now Watson. That's to the right side and complete to Najoku. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Deshaun Watson on target to David Njoku. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Derek Carr getting ready to go again on offense. Last drive, surgeon-like, dare I say, 7-for-7. Seven seven. That'll help your QB rating. <laughs> it will indeed, won't it? Can you figure out QB rating? Can you do I, it? Can no, you do the formula? No, I just know the higher the number, the better. Yeah, that's what I've been <laughs> that's told, what too. I know. I know that in the NFL, 158.3 is the number they're all trying to get to. I think he was that on that last drive. Shotgun now for Carr. Completes it to Perry. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 16 yards right off the bat in a first down. Any questions of how they'd approach this drive were answered right there. They come out throwing, and they get a nice pickup here toward the end of the first half. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Carn out of throw. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. So the completion good for seven there. And it'll be second down. And there wasn't much room for the big tight end to do much after the catch. But at least he was able to pick up a solid gain to help his offense continue to move in the right direction. Here's second and three. From midfield, here's Carr. Open man left side, Shahid has it. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. That one, a first down pickup of eight.
Now Carr. The pass caught by Alave. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. It'll be a gain of five, and that will bring up second down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Again, they'll throw with Carr. That'll be taken in by Shahid. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Now Carr. The throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. On play action, they'll throw. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Perry on the move to the right. From the gun now on third down, Carr. He's got his target. That's complete. And out of bounds right around the 20. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Car to throw again. Back of the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. And especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. On play action, it's Carr. Back of the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And his kick is indeed good. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, 
punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. So just eight ticks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Browns drive about to get started. And with eight seconds on the clock, really not a lot of time to try to put anything together. Here's Watson. That's for the former Bronco, Jerry Judy. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. The final shot before the break. Watson, he's going to loft one deep over the middle. And a little floater there is incomplete. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. A good, tight football game thus far. 10-7 to score as we resume action on EA Sports. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. And they got to be pleased with this. He brings it all the way up to the 40-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, It'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. Throw left side. Caught by the tight end to Joku. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. And that's the kind of play this offense needs to maybe kick them into gear a little bit. They've been stuck in neutral much of the game. Perhaps that can give them a little bit of confidence that big plays are out there. From their own 40 to the other 40, the gain of 20 leads to first and 10. Back to throw, Watson. He finds his man complete. That's four. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. On the ground, it's Ford. Down at the 25. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. This is second and eight. Watson. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. He's been patient this entire game, waiting for the perfect moment to surprise him with a quarterback keeper. There he catches him off guard and converts his first rush of the game into a first down. Got to love that efficiency. The deuce is wild here. Second down and two with just about two minutes on the clock. To throw is Watson. The quick slant caught. 
He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. That's a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal game. Second and goal from the one. Ford. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. Okay, second and one, you get nothing. What now on third and one? Sorry about that. I was so excited I jumped in on you. This is almost like practice to me. Line it up and do it again. You didn't get it right the first time. Just get right back on the ball and go. It doesn't matter that they know you're coming. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Jerome Ford. It's a one-yard touchdown run, and the Browns have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. So the second down run didn't work. They run it again on third down and get in. I wasn't sure if they might pass it, Charles. We know that they like to mix it up down here around the goal line. Yeah, almost felt like the offensive line said, forget mixing it up. Let's call our favorite running play over our best blockers, and let's get this one in. Here's Hopkins now for the extra point. And that makes it 14-10. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. the touchdown Dustin Hopkins will kick it away and he won't quite make it to the 25 now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half and Charles it feels like we're set up for a good second half here came out of the locker room one score game now the lead has already changed hands well this offense They've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just letting you know our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. To throw his car. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And it's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected, but this is a good pickup here for the first down. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Here's Carr. And this one taken in by Alave. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that'll bring up second down. Carr. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. He's up to 88 yards receiving in the ball game now, and he's got a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Car going to throw. Alave holds it in. It'll go down as a gain of six. And it'll be second down. Three quarters have come and gone. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. 
It's the Saints who hold the football, but they're trailing as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Throwing now is Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. And he'll go down at the 28. Seven yards there and a first down. But well, they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game. And there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it. And no adjustment has been made to take it away. On play action, now Carr. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. So pass interference, the call there always, obviously, Charles, such a subjective call. You agree with the penalty? Well, from where we're standing right now, I think the officials are tightening things up here in the second half. Maybe a defender gets away with that in the first, but this time the flag comes out, and I think it's a good call. This is caught. And the Saints are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Oh, nice job there putting the ball right in the doorstep of the goal line. Couldn't quite get into pay dirt, but he got awfully close. Let's see if they can cash it in over the next couple of plays. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. To throw, it's Carr. Touchdown! A great effort there with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Saints answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. A plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And they'll have very good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Watson now to throw. That's complete. It's Elijah Moore. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. From the 50, it's Watson. He's got Njoku over the middle. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. But right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. 
So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. This is first and ten. Here's Watson. Quick slant, caught by Moore. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Elijah Moore, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Browns have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. And touchdown and congratulations and zero relaxation ahead of them, right? Way too much time on the clock for them to start celebrating. Yeah, part one is done, but now on the sideline, you can already see them scrambling down there. They're getting those defensive guys ready. Yes, you have to get those guys ready, and you also have to talk to your special teams yeah. guys. Make sure the kickoff is exactly what you want and cover it well. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. It's up and good to make it 21-17. So that drive, four plays. And it was finished off by Elijah Moore on the touchdown reception. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Saints offense and Derek Carr ready for this next possession. And we'll take you through some of the highlights here. You'll notice he had a hand in a lot of them so far. He's got this offense rolling right now. They'll come up first and ten here. Throwing his car. He's got his target. It's Alave. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Plenty of time and two timeouts still at their disposal. First and ten here. Here's Carr. That's caught by Johnson. And he is going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. They got exactly what they wanted there. Out route, catch, get out of bounds, stop the clock. And I have to criticize defense here because you know the situation. You want to keep them in bounds and have the clock run. So I'm sitting on the outside portion of the field and not letting them throw an out route. Throw anything inside and I'll make the tackle an out route. Yeah, that's not the way you're supposed to play it. Yeah, and this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Nothing open downfield. They went underneath. Yeah, see if you can get it to your running back. See if he can make someone miss in the open field. Here comes second down and five. Car to throw. The pass caught by Alave. I'm starting to wonder here, are they trying to prevent winning? Because right now, they're laying back and they're picking them apart, moving the ball downfield. I think they got to start bringing a little pressure towards the quarterback. Here's first down. Carr. Completes it to Perry. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. 
That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. Two timeouts still in their back pocket. It's first and ten. Now Carr. Now he's got it. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as they stop it with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. They come up now on second and two. They'll run out of the gun with Kamara. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. The dog pound barking as loud as they can here. Third down. Car to throw. And he's got it. It's caught for a touchdown. And they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. Charles, that drive was perfect, methodical, executed so well, and they grabbed that lead with almost no time left for a last gas from the other side. No way you could have drawn up a better final drive because not only did they keep their eyes on the end zone, but they made sure they bled the clock out as well and denied their opponent a chance to respond. That's just terrific situational football to end this one. And a point after, good by Groupie. And it would appear, barring some late heroics, they're going to get out of here with a come-from-behind victory. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. Now couldn't take the chance. This will be returned from the goal line. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Here's first and 10. Watson. Into the hands of Cooper. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. Well, going to be tough to get two plays out of this. This could very well be it. Watson to throw. This for all the marbles. And this is incomplete. So no miracles here on the final play. And this ball game is over. What a game we were treated to in this one. And on that final play, they had a chance. They had the ball just beyond midfield for one final shot, but couldn't get it done, and they suffered the loss. Yeah, and you mentioned how they had a chance on that final play, and getting it to midfield gave them that opportunity, hoping they could find their way to the end zone and make that miracle happen. A really good ending to an entertaining contest, though. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Cleveland.